Okay, so let's have Ray pull the switch to light our Halloween tree. Alright, here we go. There we go. On October 31st, 2007, Ray Bradbury flipped the switch to light Disney's Halloween tree for the first time ever in Disneyland. But what is this tree? And why is it at Disneyland? Well, the Halloween tree is a beautifully decorated oak tree in Frontierland, just in front of the Golden Horseshoe Saloon. The tree is inspired by Ray Bradbury's novel, The Halloween Tree, where a group of kids go across time and space to save their friend. They go through many ancient cultures, including the Egyptian, Greek, and Roman cultures, and also Celtic Druidism, the Notre Dame Cathedral in medieval Paris, and the Day of the Dead in Mexico. In this journey, they learn the origins of Halloween. In this novel and many other novels and short stories, the author celebrated his love of Halloween. But what does Ray Bradbury have to do with Disney and Disneyland? Well, he had a very long history with Disney. In fact, his obsession with Halloween began because when he was nine years old, he watched the Disney Silly Symphony cartoon, The Skeleton Dance. And years later in 1964, he met Walt while they were both Christmas shopping. Bradbury went up to him to introduce himself and was relieved when Walt told him he had read his books. He then asked Walt to lunch and Walt agreed to meet up the next day. And that's when a very long friendship started. Ray arrived to Walt's office the very next day where they started talking about the World's Fair. Both Walt and Ray had contributed to the World's Fair with Bradbury writing an 18 minute script recounting the history of America for the U.S. Pavilion, and Disney creating It's a Small World, Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln, Ford's Magic Skyway, and Progress Land attractions. Walt was concerned that more than 140 pavilions representing 80 nations would all be torn down by the end of 1965. He thought it was a senseless waste, and Ray agreed. So, Walt told Ray his grand idea of a kind of World's Fair he planned to build in Florida. It would grow and change with the times, but would never die. Ray thought it was one of the best ideas he'd ever heard. He loved Disneyland and visited whenever he could, and was thrilled to think that Walt was thinking about building a bigger park in Florida. He told Walt about his last visit to Disneyland, and then they traded childhood memories. Before Ray left, Walt took him into his Imagineer's workshop, where he showed him a reanimated Abraham Lincoln and some partially constructed buccaneers for Pirates of the Caribbean. Then he took Ray for a ride on a People Mover prototype. That was the first of Ray's many visits to the Walt Disney Studios. In later months, Walt introduced him to the writers, artists, and Imagineers who helped him weave movie and theme park magic. During those visits, Ray contributed ideas and insights to various Disney projects. A year later, Walt told Ray he was going to overhaul Tomorrowland. Ray was really excited to hear that and asked Walt to hire him to help with the ideas to rebuild it. But Walt said that it was no use. He told Ray that because they were both geniuses, they would kill each other after two weeks. He would rather be continuing their friendship. And so, Ray continued contributing with ideas and insights externally. In appreciation for this, Walt asked him what he could do to repay him. Ray remembered his favorite Disney cartoons and movies and immediately asked Walt if he could open the vaults. Walt agreed and let him have 20 items of his choice from the vault. Their friendship continued until Walt passed away in 1966. After Walt's death, Ray Bradbury continued his association with the Walt Disney Company. And years later, when plans to build Epcot were being made, Bradbury was hired to help develop the storyline and script for an attraction that focused on the history of communication. This attraction later became Spaceship Earth. He also helped with the design of the structure. And he was happy that he had had all those informal talks with Walt about the development of Epcot because he would be able to put in some of the ideas that they had talked about. In the late 1980s, as Disney was preparing to build a new theme park outside of Paris, Ray hung out at Walt Disney Imagineering in Glendale, talking to the Imagineers who had known Walt, such as John DeCour Sr. and Harper Goff, 
plus many post-Walterra Imagineers such as Tim Delaney, Tony Baxter, and Pat Burke. Many of Ray's suggestions found their way into the design for the Orbitron and Phantom Manor at the park being planned for Paris. And when the park opened in 1992, Delaney dedicated the retro-futuristic Space Mountain to his heroes, Jules Verne and Ray Bradbury. He also wrote the screenplays for two Disney films based on his work, Something Wicked This Way Comes and The Wonderful Ice Cream Suit. And he also took on the role of defender of Walt's legacy. So whenever someone wrote dismissively about Disneyland or Walt's movies, Ray would slay the dragons of artistic snobbery with a few strokes of a pen. So we can see that Ray Bradbury really had a long history with Disney. That's why, in 2007, in gratitude for all his contributions to the parks and the company, Disney planned to honor him. And how did they do it? By making one of the things he wanted most in his life to come true. He dreamt of having a Halloween tree just like the one in his story become alive in a park. So, in the 35th anniversary of his novel, his dream came true. The Halloween tree came to life, complete with twinkling orange lights and hand-painted jack-o'-lanterns hanging from its branches. Brad Kay, a creative entertainment art director at the Disneyland Resort, and Imagineers Tony Baxter and Kim Irving, actually sat in front of the Golden Horseshoe and used a magic marker to draw on all the pumpkins. At the tree's dedication ceremony, Bradbury said he belonged in Disneyland ever since he had visited the park for the first time, and he was happy he was going to be a permanent part of the spirit of Halloween at Disneyland. And now, 11 years later, the Halloween tree stands tall, honoring Bradbury's amazing contribution to Disney magic. And that's the story of the Halloween tree and the beginning of our not-so-scary Halloween month specials. Let us know what you think in the comments. Please don't forget to subscribe and check out our Instagram page for a behind-the-scenes look on FastPass Facts. See you next time!